Ricky Maru up on the high ground. Then we are trying to wave off. Darcy is on the run and he jumps. afternoon again yes again we are here again with game number two between SGC and Aeon and the first game was taken by SGC as I just oh that doesn't work that way that's a shame anyway the first game was won by S SGC and uh, we're gonna see if they can take it into a second game and win that one two or if Aeon is gonna fair force out a game number three so this is a match for Pro Dota 2 non-pro league playoffs and uh, for these playoffs, the number one prize is $5,000, second prize is $3,000, and third prize is $2,000. And uh, it's a double elimination bracket. This is game number three for the entire uh, bracket so far, where we will see which team is going to go into the loser's bracket and which one is going to go into the winner's bracket. Uh, so far, it's looking good for us. You see, they just need to win one more to go make it into that winner's bracket, where they will face either... MT, uh, sorry, not MTW, no, Next KZ or Arosh, which will be played ton to tonight, later, at 6 CEST time, which I'll be streaming also. Um, and uh, the loser of that match will actually face uh, the loser of this one, so we'll see. We'll see which team is going to make it through to the winner's bracket and which one will be uh, knocked down to the lower bracket. Uh, so far we have got some heroes banned out. They do not want to face the lone druid once again. They ban out the lone druid on the Aeon side as well as the Lycan. We have a Chen and an Aegis Prophet banned out by SGC. So I don't think we're going to see the same setup once again that we had before. And with the same setup, I do mean the same tactic. Because last tactic, I mean, it was... It was just a very solid tactic from SEC. They had tons of pushing power, were able to continue to keep the pressure on, and they just did not give Aeon any time to make the carry be all big and stuff as they uh, probably wanted to. As in, as, as Aeon wanted to. And uh, yeah, we see Naga Siren being banned out, so they didn't make him uh, work, and uh, they don't want SEC to try it out and make it work for them. So uh, that is gonna be uh, banned out, as I just have to say out uh, again, or just in case you haven't heard it yet, there is. Keeper of the Light, Nyx Assassin, and last but not least, Visage, 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 Visage. It's a uh, I've heard it all, so it's uh, one of the one of those three. But uh, yeah, I, I like to call him Visage. Um, those are in the pool. They can be picked up here if the players want to play it, if the teams want to play it. Actually, saw a game, uh, casted a game with Visage in it yesterday, and that was actually the winning team also. So. Uh, I hope I don't uh, didn't spoil it for you if you want to pick that up later, if you want to watch it later. Um, but yeah, let's see though. Let's see what the ban is going to be from SGC. They are banning out the Broodmother, so banning out more pushing power. I mean, to be fair, they banned out that one in the first game as well, as well as the Chen. So, and still picking up a lot of pushing power for themselves. So maybe they're still going to go for the same uh, same strategy. They still have the Shrek. Let's see if... Uh, if Aeon wants to pick that up, or if they are going to go for uh, for something else entirely. If they want to go for something like a uh, Darkseer, which is still in the pool. They did go for that last game, uh, but then again, their Darkseer did not really make it happen. So they might want to just switch tactics in total. Maybe a Chaos Knight would be something. Oh, and for the people asking again, um, this is being played on US West. I will check the things right now. There we go. Uh, we have got everybody of uh, SGC being between 260 and 300, kind of. Uh, we have people from Aeon, we have them being between 360 and 3... sorry, 260, wow. 260 and 312, 317 rather. So that's, that's uh, it, it's, it's fairly even, the difference is about 50. So, a good one there. And they go for a Chaos Knight indeed, so that one was still in the pool. Picking up the Chaos Knight. Will as you see pick up something to stop combination? Well, they, they kind of have to pick up Le Shrek, because otherwise they'll face Le Shrek uh, Chaos Knight lane. Of course, there's a lot of combination with, the, with that uh, Chaos Knight, but Le Shrek is just a very good item, a uh, good hero to have. Not for just being good with the Chaos Knight, but also for being good on itself with the stun, uh, with the Edict 
pushing down towers and uh, yeah as you see want to have that one again they pick up the enigma as well so extra pushing power for them and someone in the jungle so a solid one for them that just that extra gold that they get there that they also had in the previous game so that is uh that is going to be a uh, pick up for them as darksy i'm quite surprised he's still in the pool and not being picked or banned yet but enigma being picked up here uh together with lashrak maybe sgc still wants to pick up the darksy and i kind of expecting that aeon is not going to pick that one up again because right now i mean it would fit into the lane up kind of maybe for uh for uh for a solo side lane but um, i'm not sure if they will pick it again uh, we have got a rubik pick up from them though they banned it out in the previous game uh, but they want to have it in this game. They want to face that Enigma. They want to throw out black holes of themselves. Because that's the thing that you can do when you have an Enigma. Uh, then um, you can just... Uh, I mean, if, if you have an Enigma on opponent's side, it's a channel spell. So you'll be able to steal it regardless, unless you're being caught in the black hole yourself. Um, you'll have a very easy time to uh, to steal that uh, spell. Uh, also, Rubik is also a very good hero against Le Shrek Because normally... Oh, there's a Dark Seer still. Okay. Still being picked up, so denied by uh, two uh, SGC. Probably uh, one of the main reasons for them to pick that up. So they pick up the Shadow Demon instead to face that with the uh, Lashrak. Uh, to have a solid dual lane for that if they want to go for that with the disruption. Guaranteed stun from Lashrak to follow that up. Uh, but what I was saying... Like, okay, Rubik is a great hero. And in theory you'll have... Uh, he'll, he, in theory he is not really a counter to everything. But it's like, everything you can do, he can do too. That's how it goes, right? But then, you have the Rubik versus the Lashrak. And then it's all of a sudden everything you can do, I can do better. Because that split earth that Lashrak has, if he d if he steals that, um, with Lashrak you have to actually time that to get it right. That's why you usually pick him up with a, with a disabled kind of person. But Rubik does not have that delay. It is an instant cast. So a great one to uh, to have there. It's going to be a nice sucker pick up for... Uh, sorry, the ban out for Aeon. I mean, they had uh, faced it in the previous game from SDC. SDC, who made good use of that, able to gank and push towers, which is exactly what they did. And uh, they do not want to have that again. So Aeon bans that out, but kind of a respect ban to SDC. As I'm just going to take a sip of water because I'm thirsty. There we go. There we go. Um, but yeah, tied on to being banned at best, you see. I'm very happy with that, since there is a person on the on the Aeon's team that is called Tidehunter. You know, avoid confusion and stuff. I wouldn't want to have, like, someone called Tidehunter on a team that is not playing the Tidehunter, and then there would be two Tidehunters on the same team. That would be very confusing. Or, even worse, would be a Tidehunter in the opponent team, then there is one Tidehunter on each team. That will be confusing. So, uh, no, no time on being banned out. Let's see what Aeon's gonna ban out. They're gonna ban out the Invoker, not wanting to face that one. Too much, uh, too much counter push, maybe? I'm not sure. They just, uh, it's, it's not a solo hero they don't want to face, because that is what SGC is looking for. A solo mid hero. Or a, or a side solo lane, or both. Windrunner's still in the pool also for that, by the way. Uh, SGC banning out more team fight potential. I mean, they have got the, the black hole. So they're thinking, like, you know what? We will deal with our team fight. And we don't want to have want you to have any apart from the dark seer, which is of course already on the radiant side. So that's going to be the case, and we'll see what uh, Aeon's going to answer to that. What they're going to pick up first in the second pick phase. They still have to have something with that chaos knight. I mean, there's an a there's an agent operation, which is a great combination. Crystal maiden is an okay combination. Lena is being picked up fairly regular with that chaos knight purely because of the massive burst that it can, it can have. Uh, but yeah, a lot of options still there for Aeon to pick up as a support for that uh, chaos knight. Uh, which they probably still need if they are not... Well, maybe they're going to go with the Rubik support. I'm not, I don't think so, though. I'm kind of expecting Darkseer on a side solo lane. Um, side hard solo hard lane, even. Rubik mid. Disruptor. Ooh, maybe this will, well, this will change stuff around. Disruptor we picked up. I mean, he ha I have seen him, seen him being played as support. I've also seen, seen him being played as a... Um, as a as a carry, or at least the one that farms on a, on a dual lane or on a tri lane. So we'll see. We will see, and some some nice uh, that that I can call that team fight as well. I mean that's good team fight there, definitely, with that uh, thunderstorm combined with the kinetic field combined with the static storm, and uh, that's just really painful. Yeah, so uh, we're we're gonna see what uh, SEC has to answer to this. Are they gonna pick up a wisp? Or no, keeper of the light. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not sure. 
I'm really not sure. The Wisp is actually Disruptor is a, is a counter to the Wisp, so that's not really a good one to have. Um, but uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, they have still got to go, like I said, they have still got to go a solo lane, uh, which I'm kind of expecting the wind run or something like that, but they still don't have their, their... I mean, their strategy right now, they have a bit of pushing power, yes. They have a bit of mid-game solo, yes. But they need something more. I mean, they need something uh, with damage or with more pushing power. And a wind runner would be nice, but it it's kind of non-characteristic because she can do everything in the end, but she needs uh, she needs that start. And she she can count push, yeah, but she yeah hmm, yeah I'm not no I'm not expecting a wind runner anymore. Ten seconds remaining up on their bonus time though. Let's see what they're gonna go for. We we will find mm -hmm. out shortly. Hopefully. Beastmaster being picked up here, so that's gonna be their solo lane. That, well, that is something with more. I mean, like I said, they need something with more, and they have got the the roar now, and they they need that. They need that roar upon that uh, upon that uh, chaos knight because he's gonna have a BKB at some point. Well, maybe not anymore. Not the beastmasters on that team, and uh, he'll be able to roar that, and they'll be able to take it down. So that's gonna be a good one for them to have. And he'll start ganking around at six as well. I mean, it's it's it's. In that sense, it's comparable to Night Stalker. Night Stalker will continue, will gank uh, as well on that uh, at that time. Bye. And Beastmaster, when he gets level six, he wants to use his roar. Of course, he'll not probably not get that much farm unless yeah, he'll probably not get that much farm. But he will be able to stack, and with that stacking, he will be able to uh, to uh, to gain his levels up fairly quickly again once he is uh, good enough, high enough to take down those ancients. Um, we have Windrunner still being in the game, but picked up by Aeon instead. I mean, they needed a solo lane, apparently. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how they're going to lane it. I mean, we're probably going to see a Rubik support then. Maybe with a tri lane, with a Disruptor, Rubik, and a Chaos Knight. Uh, with a solo lane for the Windrunner mid, and a solo lane for the Darkseer on the side hard lane. Um, we'll find out, though, soon enough. Seven seconds left for uh, for SDC, and they don't have any bonus time left, just one second. And they go for Storm Spirit. So they needed they needed a mid lane, I, I said that earlier, I believe, where they needed two solo lanes, or solo and a mid lane, and it's going to be their Storm Spirit that will be picked up by, by them. So that will be the hero for them to complete their lineup. And we will jump ourselves into the game, uh, as in we are already in the game, but as, as in I will switch overlay so that you can see the entire screen right here. There we go. Um, so that you won't miss a single thing. And I'm actually, I mean, look at that. Look at the times. Both teams still have one second left until their bonus time, using the maximum out of everything they could. It's a nice one there, definitely. As we will see who's playing what shortly. We will see, hopefully, soon. So, what can we expect from Aeon? Team fight. I mean, with... A Kinetic field. Even if uh, nobody is in initially in your kinetic field, you can always vacuum people in it, Five seconds remaining. or vacuum kinetic field, whichever order you want to have it at. So nice one there. Gonna have some good timings though. Now we're gonna probably have a pause, I believe, since people have not picked up their hero yet. Oh. There we go. And uh, yeah, that will be ti that will be fi team fight for uh, for Ion indeed. Uh, team fight for for SDC. I mean, is there too with that black hole? But they need a bit more for that. They need a good black hole for that. They will have a roar. They will have a lot of damage to go through with that. With the stun from the Shrek, with the Edict, Nova Pulse, it's uh, it's uh, it's all there. They just have to get it uh, combined. They have to get it come together. They don't don't have a uh, a vacuum that can position them perfectly for it. So uh, since SDC has already picked up all of their heroes, let's see who's playing what. We have got two legs this time on the Shrek. We've got Ofek on the Shadow Demon, Cranish is going to be playing the Storm Spirit, Warlock is going to be playing the Beastmaster, and Prof Headshot will be playing the Enigma for SDC up on the Radiant side. Uh, they have a nice banner also, there we go. And a nice uh, logo as well. So that's uh, that's everybody up on the side of SDC. Let's move ourselves over to the Radiant side. Before people have picked up their heroes already, uh, we see Awesome playing the Darkseer again. Uh, we have the Chaos Knight being played by... Someone from Aeon. I checked his team profile earlier there. He has it completely uh, closed off. I can't see who it was, so this is the only uh, only information that we have. Uh, and we've got the Tidehunter playing the Disruptor. We've got King playing the Windrunner. Mr. Keo is going to be playing that Rubik, so he will be supporting indeed. He was supporting in the previous game as well. And that was actually everybody already. I did it call everybody. Yeah, I did. Uh, on Aeon. So that will be uh, that will be our teams for uh, for this game. This is game number two, in case you forgot. Game number two for this best out of three to see which team is going to make it to the winner's bracket of this elimination playoffs for the Pro Dota 2 non-pro league.
Yes, that all fit in one sentence. Everybody's FGC is moving towards the top lane so far. I've got to try to find someone. They won't find anybody, though. It looks like King is being very careful. He's just going to stand here and wait to see if the rune is going to spawn here. Oh, unless he's going to be not careful enough. But they can't see it now. They can't see him. 30 seconds to battle. I don't know what they're... They may be expecting someone to walk past here, but... Not going to happen for now. No. Windrun and Rubik, fine. They're just fine. Windrun already specced by uh, the Windrunner as well as the Telekinesis spec by the Rubik. Darkseer actually looking to go. Is he gonna go into the jungle? Picked up a smoke, could go into the jungle, but there was a there was a reason change. Uh, that if neutrals take damage from an invisible target, they will try to flee. Oh wow, King is in trouble here. Already took a disruption. Telekinesis is there for the Shadow Demon. Tried to land him on the high ground. Did not work out. Invisibility. And it's going to be a Windrunner that will be fine as well as Mr. Q and everybody else of SGC. That's the thing that you can try with the Rubik. Trying to throw people up on the high ground. And it has been done. I mean, in the most professional games you can imagine, it has been done. I have seen a game where uh, Loda on a Beastmaster, so Loda from Zenith on a Beastmaster, was knocked up onto this high ground. Before the game even started, and he was stuck there for two minutes before the courier was updated, before the he was able to get a TP scroll. It was just, it was just something. I mean, you kind of expect those strategies from from troll teams and stuff like that and pubs, but it it happens in professional games also. But this time, it uh, not happened for Mr. Keo, who did try it on the Shadow Demon, but was not able to do it. Uh, we've got a Tan Hunter playing uh, the Disruptor on the solo bot lane versus Warlock. He should be fine. Uh, Warlock will take some harassment from uh, from the Disruptor, but uh, yeah, in theory he should be just fine. Maybe Warlock will still be able to get some uh, right clicks in as well before he feels like he's harassed uh, too much. So far though, I mean his right click damage is not uh, that in insane, so he can just uh, continue doing this. Uh, we have the mid lane, it's going to be Shadow Demon and the Shrek, I mean the combination which we talked about. And it's going to be, they're going to be facing a Chaos Knight that's by himself. Uh, and I stayed by himself, but Rubik is actually supposed to be there, or at least he uh, has been warding a bit, has been counter-warding a bit. Uh, he counter-warded, but he did not find this ward, unfortunately for him. Uh, but yeah, he'll be in the middle lane supporting on that uh, Chaos Knight. And uh, we've got the Darkseer indeed in the jungle. He's gonna try to uh, stack this camp and then go for his uh, Smoke of the Seed. Let's see how that works with the, with the, with the changes. I'm quite, surprised, quite uh, curious to see how that's gonna go. Uh, Windrunner will be on a solo top lane versus the Storm Spirit. Uh, there will be an Enigma in the jungle and that is everybody, everybody of the lanes uh, in for uh, which you were interested in, I hope, at least. I think the hardest lane is gonna be this one. Uh, purely because when the Shadow Demon is level 2, like he is now, and if he gets a good disruption up there, and with that ward there, he actually could. He, you saw him trying to go for it when the Chaos Knight was actually just standing here, but he could not see him, so he could not initiate. But if that happens again, that will almost guaranteed be a kill with that Soul Catcher on there, as well as the Edict and the Stun. That will be a lot of damage. We're going to see if uh, if, he, if they're going to be able to do that, because Rubik is... He picked up a Haste Rune, nice Rune Control, but uh, yeah, Rubik is, is, is not there all that much. Well, he wasn't so far. He's level 2 right now, though, so it might help uh, help out. Hasn't skilled as level 2, though. And I'm kind of expecting it to be a Fade Bolt. In the meantime, Winter... Oh, I should check out this one, sorry. Not check out, but I should have it up there. Do they want to go for this? It looks like they might be. Red series already happened. There goes the stun. One second stun. Shadow Demon in a lot of trouble there. Telekinesis. First blood will go to the Chaos Knight. And he will be fine for the Chaos Knight. He'll be able to back off. Edict not able to do enough damage there. Disruption not able to help out enough. And that is one kill. I mean, I thought it was going to be the other way around. But Rubik actually making sure that he was there to help out. To initiate. And that was a kill. First blood going towards Aeon. In the meantime, we're going to check out the Disruptor, who, how he's doing with the last hits. He is 10 for 3 right now, not that bad. 10 for 0 upon the Beastmaster, so still fairly even there. And, uh, yeah, did he uh, start yet? Nope. Nope. That's what I have to uh, continuously check. See, Cranius is already taking some harassment here from uh, from the Windrunner. Windrunner is 15 for 5, Cranius is being 15 for 0. So, again, another very even lane. The only difference is... Uh, as you see, not denying anything on the top lane, neither on the bottom lane, so that's going to be the difference there. But other than that, I mean, last hits are fairly even. Who cares about the nice then, right? Well, maybe some should, but uh, yeah. Definitely a nice job regardless for, uh, for both teams. We have the highest uh, on the last hits 
is gonna is gonna be that enigma. But he's in a jungle, so not everybody has the same value for their um, for their uh, for their clips. Other than that, is gonna be the the wind runner that is uh, highest up on the gold on up on the sorry not on the gold mid up on the last hit. But they're still it's still very even with Sorcerer. Only one difference. So right now we're not seeing that much uh, that much change. And Darkseer actually started to pull. He has a smoke. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Come on, awesome. Where's the smoke? Or is he gonna stack them again? I think he is. He might be. I think he will be. Dark Seer, I'm, I'm checking in the meantime if I'm not missing anything else. Yeah, he's gonna stack again. Wow. And I like that he starts earl a lot earlier with the with the pulling because otherwise those last uh, creeps would not have joined. And he actually feels the pull. And pops an iron shovel. And there goes the smoke. The iron shell will make sure they uh, they are still in range of that uh, of that iron shell, even though they try to flee. It's not gonna happen. Ooh, Beastmaster. He's fine though. Yeah, even though they flee, I mean they will still go down. Slowly but steadily, and that will give him an all of experience. And meantime, on the top lane, Vortex up on Winter, and I was being supported here by Enigma. And uh, that's gonna be Winter on landing a shackle, still on the run out. He's running the wrong way, though. Self got popped off, one more right click needed, but he has boots already. Store Spirit also has boots. Is he gonna be faster? He will have mana again, and he is level 6. There's the last hit, and that's gonna be giving the kill towards Cranage on his Storm Spirit. So one for one right now, Winter was not able to get away from that one, and even the rest of SGC didn't even co 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 come there to. Uh, to try to stop uh, the Windrunner from trying to escape. They expected him to take it down, it was all good. All good. Beastmaster, we saw him running back with very low health, but he TP's back to the bottom lane and we'll continue with his stacking, as you can see. And uh, we'll continue trying to, to steal some experience for the experience that he can. Which is not going to be all that much. Darkseer level 5 and 1600 gold with those uh, creeps that he just killed. Nice play there. Nice job. Nice job indeed. Gold graph in favor of Aeon. I mean, they took the first blood, and they've been doing very, fairly good on, uh, on farming as well. I mean, we see the darks here. That's this is the boost of the darks here. He is all of a sudden on 38 last hits. He's all of a sudden higher than Enigma that was in a jungle as well for farming the farming the creep. So uh, definitely nice job there. Disruption going off on the darks. The chaos knight getting stunned as well. Soul catcher there, and that's gonna be a kill. Enigma actually taking it, helping out there with the Malefice. But uh, yeah, well, that's what I talked about. That combination is just so deadly that it's still, uh, yeah. It's 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 you can't really get away from that one. And Rubik was not there to do anything against it either. Fade bolt going through. He's at least able to pull the lane uh, back a bit. But edict, edict level three. Wow. Oh, and a pause. And a pause indeed. Let's see though. Boots up on the Beastmaster. He has got a soul ring already. He's yeah, he's still stacking these. Actually, he's been trying to kill them off already, so he'll get some uh, advantage there. Um, he wants to get his level six probably as fast as he can. He's level six. Oh, actually, actually, he has level six. Ooh, we should keep an eye on him. Maybe he'll try to go for Disruptor. Disruptor, who's been soloing this lane for a while, got mana boots, got a uh, wand, has uh, been doing great. Thirty-one for nine right now. Has been keeping on par with. Uh, with everybody, basically. With everybody. And he, oh, middle lane. Something's about to happen. There goes the Enigma being put in the shop to try and save his life. I still think he will go down, though. Lands in Malefice before he drops to the darks here. And uh, make sure that Shadow Demon is going to be able to back off with that for uh, level 4 of his. Not sure if that was worth the TP from, uh, from the Disruptor, but they actually want to continue pushing this. The roar from the Beastmaster. I mean, he doesn't have mana for it right now. Uh, he TPs to the top lane, probably wants to use it there, wants to go for this uh, Windrunner if they land a roar. And with Cranish of full mana, they might be able to go for this Cranish. Ball lightning in, there comes the Vortex as well, here comes the roar from the Beastmaster, there it is. And that, it I don't know if that's going to be a kill, actually, Windrunner is not, ah, that's a kill. Still power shot through, oh, Windrunner still taking Storm Spirit with her, though, creeps helping out there. Wow, that should not have happened. That should not have happened. What is going to happen here on this middle lane is Chaos Knight staying alive. Disruptor used his uh, used his static storm. Is it actually called static storm? Yes, it is. Just curious. But uh, no kills here. The kill was on the top lane. I can't believe that storm spirit actually died with that. That was so not the plan. 
I mean, two versus one gank, you can't really afford to die like that. I mean, of course, Windrunner wasn't there to take the kill experience anymore because she died first. But still, uh, quite painful for uh, for SGC to deal with. And there goes Ball Lighting in. They want to go for the Disruptor. Here comes the Vortex as well. Some from the Shrek to follow it up. And it's going to be Disruptor going down. The Shrek taking the last hit. I need some more water. Again, still. Quick kills. Quick kills indeed. Okay. Reality Rift. Stun. One second only. TP in. That's not going to be worth it. He backs off. Chaos Knight actually wants to go for this. But no. Uh, sorry, Shadow Dean wants to go for this. Chaos Knight too fast. Our tower is no longer there. So they could have chased a bit further, which they tried. But yeah, Chaos Knight is just... In this game, he's the fastest hero. I, I, I used to say he's the fastest hero in the game. But then Luna came in. So I can't say that, mon uh, that one anymore. But Luna barely rarely gets picked up. So I can just say in this game... Ooh, in this game, Vortex is on the Windrunner. Roar goes up again. Same combination, but this time... I don't think Windrunner can take a kill with her power shots. So not hitting anything this time. And Malefis and Enigma taking the last hit. And it's gonna be a defense for the tower though. So they, they won't be able to push it. But at least they got a kill this time without uh, losing someone in return. Power shot not hitting there. Edict still doing a lot of damage to this tier 2 tower. And that's, that's gonna be the power of SDC. I mean they can do that if there's a dist uh, distraction somewhere else. That Lashrak is just gonna go somewhere else and just push. He's just going to continue pushing. Of course, at some point that will stop the tier 1 towers will be down. Tier 2 towers are a bit harder to push for him that way, but... Uh, yeah, definitely uh, will be something to watch out for for Aeon, as the gold advantage is in favor of SGC, mostly due to the tower going down, as well as the two kills, of course, but uh, yeah, something to uh, to take into uh, into account. Uh, Darkseer, in the meantime, highest up on the last hit with the Enigma. I mean, those two are f have been farming in the jungle. Still the highest up there with Beastmaster doing a great job. Stay at getting closer. I mean, he's 41 for 0. I mean, he had a pretty tough lane with a Disruptor. Range for his melee is never easy. Uh, in the meantime, the Shrek killing off the Chaos Knight. Chaos Knight was by himself. It was again the combination with the Soul Catcher and the Sun. I'm going to go back to the top lane because something is happening here. Prof Headshot taking, uh, taking a Thunderstorm. I should be able to stay alive with it, though. I have four heroes of Aeon defending this tier one tower on the top lane. That is what they want to do. And they want to actually maybe take a tower in return. That could be it. That could be it indeed. Gold graph experience graph. That, that's the kills, right? It, it started off fairly e even. I mean, SCC taking taking some kills, Aeon taking some kills, but then last three kills going towards SCC side. Two legs on the way out. Gonna get harassed. Disruption up on the wind runner. They won't turn around for it though because here comes the Chaos Knight. Was looking for this uh, for uh, for Rihanna's here, but it's not gonna get it. Chaos Knight is actually level seven. He's not doing that bad, but oh wow, look at these levels. I mean, normally you see a Beastmaster. At this point, you'll see him around to the same level as uh, as the Soul Laner was, as the Titan was. Roar, Axis, Tower helping out. There comes the, uh, the Static Rift, but still, there goes the Disruptor going down. And uh, Rubik going down as well. Enigma coming in from the back, making sure that happens. And this will be a pushing uh, on the Tier 1 Tower that's still standing on the bottom lane, top lane rather. Uh, what I was going to say is though, usually you see Beastmaster being forced out of the lane so he can't get any experience there. And then afterwards, he'll pick up his experience with the Ancients. But this. Beastmaster was actually able to do twice. He got the experience on the lane and he also got the experience from the Ancients. So, um, making sure that he has that advantage and that's why he has that highest level up in the game right now. Disruptor being fairly close with 9 as well as uh, 2 others. So, uh, not that big a difference, but a difference nonetheless. And actually went there to check out on the, on the Chaos Knight. Chaos Knight is level 7 still. Um, I mean, he has been doing okay. He died twice. He got a kill for himself. But it's it's not really the situation that you want your Chaos Knight to be in. You want him to be a bit more ahead. I mean, he was going on a semi-dual lane. First, well, of course, the Rubik wasn't really o there all the time. Even though they were able to get the first blood there. But I do think that... Uh, oh, wow. Hello. Ball lightning in. Oh, donkey. Cranage wants to go for the donkey. Is he going to be able to get it? One more right click needed. But no, he backs off with that haste rune. TP incoming from the Rubik. There's going to be more, though. Here comes the wind runner. He's going to shoot down a hawk. 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 Yeah, whatever. He's gonna try to land a shackle. Still has it though? Nope. As it has a shackle, but he's not gonna try to land, land it. That's my point. Four heroes of Aeon in the middle lane. I'm gonna say four because they're broke up. Four heroes of SGC in the Radiant Forest. 
the only one they might potentially find is the Chaos Knight. But Chaos Knight is playing it very safe. I mean, last time he got picked off here. Oh, it's about to turn into a team fight, actually. It's going to be five euros here from out from both teams. As in, if I, I counter Chaos Knight, unless he dies before that, he pops his Phantasm, gets stunned. If where's the Edict? There's the Vortex, and it actually happens on Illusion. This is the real one. Chaos Knight getting slowed. Here comes Darks here, puts up a wall, gets three through it. Nice job. Mechanism will pop. Roar goes off on the Chaos Knight, gets him down as well. And there goes this Shrek, trying to land the stun, gets stunned himself, gets silenced. And there he goes. In the meantime, Kinetic Field and I, and Static Storm not being able to do as much as, uh, as they was hoping it would do. The Shrek for Chaos Knight, not really a great trade. Beastmaster taking a stun, probably going to go down. Shackled, not latching. Rubik taking a kill up on the Beastmaster. Thunderstorm up on the K Shadow Demon. He probably won't die from that, but he's taking a lot of damage. Actually puts himself under disruption just in case. Power shot go through, clearing out the creep wave, and they want to go for the tier 1 tower. If, if this tier 1 tower drops, that will be the first tier 1 tower for Aeon to, uh, to go with the old Cranage. He's invisible. You can see that, but you know, they can't. So, that's why I say it. Oh, Vortex. And there goes the Rubik, and he pulls Lightning's away. Double kill as he picks up the Disruptor in the meantime as well. Darkseer so taking the kill up on Cranius though, but definitely worth it. I mean, he got a double kill, and he only gave his own life in return, so definitely, n definitely worth it. Chaos Knight, who thought, you know what, too much action on the other on lane. Got too, heat, uh, too hot for me on the, my feet, so I'll just move on to the middle lane and continue my far, which is exactly what he should be doing. But as we can see, his, uh, oh, that's not the right graph. His last hits aren't that amazing. He's, like, on par with, uh, with the Storm Spirit, who was, uh, well, I, I was expecting Storm Spirit to be a bit better there on that department, but uh, by the looks of it, no, not really. Uh, Let's check the dying in middle tower here, so that's the first tower going down on the side of SGC, but it is at a 9, so... Not gonna get that extra gold for um, Aeon, unfortunately for them. And again, I need water. Sorry. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Wah. Hello, awesome. Gets put into disruption. Where's the soul catcher? There's gonna be uh, there's gonna be a stuff from the Shrek. So there's the soul catcher as well. Fate bolt going through. Oh, wow. A lot of damage being done here. Darkseer taking two kills. Shadow Demon and the Shrek. Storm Spirit still took the kill up on the Darkseer though, but again, definitely worth it. Three seconds done. That's gonna be Chaos Knight. And Nick actually taking a last one on the Rubik, and Chaos Knight taking a last one on the Storm Spirit. There is the black hole. Catches two heroes, but no damage to go through. Poor Ratchet gets a reality trip, gets a two seconds done. Chaos Knight is just gonna continue right clicking this one. Is he gonna be able to do that enough though? I mean, they will need a crit, but that Malefice will stop him from attacking. In the meantime, the chase is on. It's gonna be Beastmaster that will try to get blocked. No block there. He's gonna try to TP away from the bottom, but Shackle will interrupt that one, even though it doesn't latch. Doesn't need to latch. Power Soul will finish it off. And King makes. Takes the last hit. He picked up a uh, headdress. He's gonna go for that mechanism for his team, which they need. Mechanism, which is also being built up on Enigma. Actually completed already. He's now building towards the BKB. And uh, Pipe being built up on the Darkseer. So uh, Aeon trying to f complete those uh, those items, those team fight items, before they can go into the team fights without letting themselves get caught up by a black hole. Because they, they did the previous team fight. They did it perfectly. I mean, they they picked off the heroes one by one. Of course, the Darkseer and Shell did a bit more damage than, uh, than expected for the Dire side, and they will probably not make the same mistake again, but... Uh, they're definitely holding back... Uh, Aeon is definitely holding back the push from pushes from SGC. There is, uh, there is two towers in favor of SGC right now, but these tier two towers that are still standing on the side of Aeon, they... Apart from this one, which they got taken down by the track very low, uh, it looking, it's looking okay. It's looking okay. Gold Graph will be a bit in favor of SGC, purely due to the extra towers that they took down. Two towers, to be exact. Uh, but other than that, three kills and, and two towers is not that big, that much, uh, that much gold. So uh, still, everything can happen. Experience graph that shows it better. I mean, it was in favor of SGC, but last team fight, there we go, in favor of Aeon once again. And now I can think again. Sorry, I, w I don't have to say sorry when I drink water, right? Nope, water is needed. It's even uh, cold water. It's probably better if it's warm. Mm, oh well. It's okay. I have been taught, like, your throat is like an oiled machine, but you need to put oil in it, and the oil being water or fluid. Yeah, that's, uh, that's why I drink a lot. And it also refreshes me. Because I need to be refreshed. Because if, if I'm not refreshed, I might miss stuff. Uh, for example, there's Enigma, which is looking for a black hole, which he doesn't have yet, but he has an invisibility rune. 
And there goes the Vortex. What did he steal though? He stole the Vortex. Nice job there. If he can get a range shackle, will ledge. Telekinesis. Oh, nice one there. And he gets put into the into the into the so not telekinesis well. Uh, there was a telekinesis, but he would put into a kinetic field, and that's gonna be the kill. Dark Seer taking the last hit. Vortex was stolen, so was used on the panda. And even though the kinetic field did not do all that much, it was still a nice gank and nice kill as they were trying to push down his tier one tower right now. With everybody here from Aeon, apart from this Chaos Knight, we're thinking, you know what, I'll go continue pushing the bottom lane. I'll, I'll, I'll take this gold for me. And uh, I will still receive the money from the t tower going down the top lane. And there we go, Darkseer taking the last hit. Darkseer, who I should have, yeah, he has his pipe already, actually. Still has 900 gold to go with that. 1900 gold up on the Rubik. Curious what to see what he is going to go for. Disruptor is going to be playing that semi support role because he has not got m much more than Arcane Boots and a Magic Wand. And uh, he. Sh well, I was expecting him to have more because, of course, he was first a Beastmaster, but. Uh, yeah, his last hits are not that impressive, to be fair. And, he, of course, he died three times, so. Well, not all that great. Tier 2 Tower getting pressured here a bit by the creeps. I'm wondering if uh, Aeon is going to go in there and, and going to try to continue pushing them th for themselves. They place the ward knowing that the only one here is the Storm Spirit and he'll be able to ball lightning away from that one. So uh, if they want to go for something they can push down the tower. Thunderstorm being used. Player of the creep wave in the meantime. Bottom lane might be some trouble. Here comes Lush Track clearing out the creep wave. They want to go for more Beastmaster. Uh, is here as well, and here comes the Atlas, and that's gonna be a tier two tower dropping for sure. It's just so much damage, and that's that will leave no other option for Aeon to take down the tier two tower on the top lane either. Otherwise, I mean they need to have some sort of a trade, unless uh, unless they want to go in here. We have a black hole ready from the Enigma if they want to go for it. More going off on the darks here. Is being put in his place for a while, and uh, he will drop there. Enigma taking the last hit. The rest of Aeon backing off there, and they know it won't be uh, yeah. They know it wouldn't be wise to stay anymore, and everybody TPs out, and apart from the Windrunner, who still takes a lot of arrest, but no amount of less on the storage page, uses his bottle charge, still has a vortex, but gets a 4 seconds done there. But here comes the cavalry, and there goes the Edict as well, nice shackle, still latches, it might still actually still stay alive, but there goes it. Wow, whoa, you know, no, oh, I miss! That's gonna be last hit, yeah, let's try taking the last hit. I was actually thinking he might, uh, he might stay alive there. But then he didn't. And then he died. Four seconds on landing of the Beastmaster. Reality of Telekinesis. Black Hole being used. Catches two heroes. And now they really have to back off. Chaos Knight uses his Phantasm. Four heroes of SGC here. It's going to be A that's really outnumbered right now. Chaos Knight taking a lot of abuse there. With the demonic players being slowed. And uh, we'll be backing off. We have a split earth being stolen by the Rubik. In case you were wondering why everybody got stunned there. That was the Rubik split earth. Rubik, who picked up a blink dagger as his target, so he will have some great initiation. In the meantime, Storm Spirit, yeah, he's backing off. Sorry. So, just thinking he was so super low. But yeah, uh, with that Rubik picking up the blink dagger, they will have great initiation up on them. Making sure that, uh, you know, you can blink in and do your telekinesis and wait for the rest of your party to come in. So so definitely something there. I mean, th then you don't have to wait for your Dark Seer to be there with the Surge and a pipe on and everything. Kind of, uh, m you know, it's a... Uh, if the Darkseer does that, it's kind of obvious what he's doing. Uh, well, if you just blink in and start to look and eating someone, that's is, you know, a lot less obvious. And it would be um, a lot useful, a lot more useful for ganks and uh, certain stuff. Yeah. And once taken down, Gold Graph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no surprise, really. As you see, able to take the last team fight. Experience Graph shows the same thing. I mean, they were able to take the last team fight. Experience is. Uh, Based on kills and stuff, so yep, good one. And the hawk will he stay alive? Looks like he will be. And looks like yeah, they want to go for something. Hello, SCC ball lightning in. They want to go for something. Here comes the vortex lands on the disruptor. Disruptor is already taking a lot of damage from that. Still managed to kill off the hawk, but gets picked up by the storm spirit here. Nice play by SGC, picking off some of the remainders. Uh, was actually the only one left there. It was gonna be King and uh, Mr. Keo backing off again. They did not want to be there. No surprise there. And in the meantime, this Chaos Knight, I mean, he has been having relatively free farm. He's not been in that much fights. And he's been in 4 out of the 11 kills so far. And has died 4 times too. But his goal per minute is kind of low. 261. Meantime, tier 1 tower on the top lane got, uh, got taken. Oh, actually, that one already was taken out. It looks like they're going to go for the tier 2 next. Here's come the strike with the at level 4. Building towards his uh, bloodstone by the looks of it still.
Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. At least uh, Aeon is able to take the tower in return, but they will Radiant trade a tier 2 tower for that. We've got pipe being built up by the Beastmaster. Instead of even building a uh, a four staff, I mean that's the same story as the as a disruptor. He'll be able to four staff himself forward and disrupt the target, and that will be initiation. Tower goes down, pause goes on. Oh, this is not a good pause. Well, this is like a tactical pause. This is a tactical pause. So. Oh, Darkseer disconnecting. Okay, not that tactical pause then. But at, le at least they won't have a black hole. They will have more people TPing in. Shadow Demon is TPing here as well. That's gonna be uh, that that one that you saw. This one. This is gonna be Shadow Demon. Uh, do they have more though? This is Enigma. He's already there. And the rest of... Aeon is backing off. But the uh, Phantasms will still be able to take off the tower. The only uh, trouble is gonna be for the Chaos Knight or for the Windrunner. Windrunner still has a Windrun though. Uh, Chaos Knight would be able to uh, get a disruption in his face and might be get picked off here, but we'll see. No, he, can't, he actually cancels the TP in. Went there instead. Shack, oh, Enigma in some trouble! Going down here, Chaos Knight! Doing the big work, Telekinesis up on the Shadow Demon, they want to go for the 3 seconds Sun Lining as well, and that's going to be a kill in the meantime. There's going to be also a kill on the bottom lane where Darkseer is able to take off the Storm Spirit and Darkseer paying for that due to Beastmaster taking his life away from that one. Uh, Windrunner was able to pick off the Shadow... Oh, actually, that was on the top lane, but Beastmaster was able to take down the Disruptor before all that happened. That was uh, the trade-off. So uh, getting two kills on the top lane, uh, trading two for one on the bottom lane. As you see, I mean, at least uh, they didn't go home in vain, but their Tier 3 tower is still getting pressured a lot here in this bottom lane. Chaos Knight being there doesn't have Phantasm anymore. Uh, doesn't need it though, this tower, I mean, don't they have a TP? No, the Shrek does not have a TP. I guess they don't. There goes the tier 3 tower. We have 3F, 4 seconds down. Nice one, lucky. Blink in, Telekinesis. Shackle doesn't hit disruption. We'll save his life for now. Stun landing. And it's gonna be a Shrek being able to back off. Arrows flying through, hitting up on the Chaos Knight. But Chaos Knight doesn't matter. He'll just continue running anyway. As you see, looking for a stray, looking for a kill. 4 staff is up there if they want a 4 staff disruption up on the Shadow Demon. Malefice going off on the Rubik in the meantime. Uh, I'm wondering what he's gonna do. Yeah, he's gonna die. I was gonna say, that's uh, that's almost a guaranteed kill. Vortex up on the Chaos Knight, preventing him from TP away. He won't have a TP again. Gets a 2 second stun up on that one, but he is gonna be out of position and he will be picked off. Lashrak taking the last hit. And uh, even though the massive creep wave is pushing in, it's not gonna be enough to take down any of the barracks. It's gonna be in favor of SGC this fight. Even though they did lose the tier 3 tower for that. It, um... Yeah. That, I'm not sure. I am not sure if I can call that in favor of SUC. I mean, they were able to stop the pushing from happening. That is all great and stuff. And they got some kills back, but losing their tier 3 tower is quite painful. Wow, did it again. Shame on me. Refreshing the air on my lungs. Looks like Roshan is gonna be... Going down. Oh, this is this is mean. I think someone is barbecuing outside. That is so mean. Oh. Anyway, sorry for the distraction, but that's you know what food does to you, distracting. Where's the party? Here is the party. It's gonna be Roshan party, and he will drop. He will be no longer part of the party. Ages will probably be picked up by the storm spirit. There we go. And uh, there was I don't even think that Aeon knew what was going on. They don't have a ward there. And they didn't even try to go for it, even though I do think they had a fair chance. But that disruptor having his ulti up, kinetic field there as well, would be the perfect place to place it. Even though, of course, with black hole already uh, steady go for uh, for a perfect shot, might not be all that great to go in there. Smoke up. Initiation team one on one. Blink is on. Want to go for Beastmaster? Want to go for Beastmaster? Is that actually? Did they change their mind? It looks like they do. Looks like they do. That's a shame. Chaos Knight is really thinking, you know what? I'll just, uh... I'll just uh, check out the top lane for a second and then moves back. Okay, so it's gonna be 5 on 5 here. Everybody here, as you see, everybody here, all of Aeon. And they're gonna find each other. Or is Aeon actually gonna back off? It could be. Prophet's up looking for that perfect black hole. There's a sun. Two seconds. Phantasm as well. BKB popped by Prof Headshot. Is he gonna try to do a, B a black hole? There he goes, catches the, the Chaos Knight in it though, but there's no damage to go through. And he turns around, the Phantasms are gone, but so far, well, Jumpers are the rest of the fight, where 
Two Lex is backing off from that one. Storm Spirit taking care of the disruptor. So at least they got one kill. It was actually Enigma being able to stay alive there. Quite uh, surprising. I mean, <laughs> Secure in our tier to tower. What kind of fight was this? And I know I only saw one part of it with the black hole, but surely the rest should have been able to kill off more. There we go. There goes the disruptor. Sorry, there goes the Rubik, taken care of by Lashrak. And Storm Spirit wants to go for more. And does he have a vortex? No, not for another nine seconds. Vacuum gets him away. Surge is on there as well. But Ball Lightning will be able to keep him on track. It's going to be support, but it's not going to be in time enough. Uh, who might be uh, in some trouble is the Chaos Knight who thought to help his teammate but uh, won't get stunned but will get Vortex, will get a Soul Catcher, will go down the Shrek getting a double kill for that one. Well I could call it a double kill but the timing of that was uh, was a bit off for that so the Shrek killing off the Ruby killing off the Chaos Knight. Great fight for SGC. Even though, well, it was really, I mean really they they did a good job. I mean they they stopped the, the, the gank slash push incoming on the middle lane. Tier 2 tower going down. All 2 towers down on the side of AM right now. Um, so they stopped that, and then they managed to pick up two heroes on the way out. It's just SGC, it's, uh... That, that was, yeah. Oh, vacuum there, pipe up as well. Oh, shackle doesn't latch. Yeah, SGC, able to keep it cool, keep the control, keep, uh... Yeah, keep the control, that's the one. Tower will drop the strike, take the last out of that one, and they'll back off for now. Don't have a black hole anymore, do have a roar, I believe. Yep. Oh, Cranage wants to go in. Vortexing up on the Tide Hunter. That is the Disruptor. Actually, Axe will fly through. There goes the Disruptor going down. Kinetic Field will hold some in place. Warlock getting a dis Vortex on him, though. though. It's going to be uh, off fact that he's in a lot of trouble. Has going to stay alive a while due to the mechanism. Oh, wow. Stick Charge is almost getting back to full HP. Well, Shrek will still die to the Windrunner. But uh, I can't believe that the Shadow Demon get stayed alive for that long. I mean, he'll still go down, but he made sure that Windrunner... Uh, was out of his base, uh, unable to help his teammates for a long time. Kratos is going to try to get away with ball lighting up onto the high ground. It should be fine. And that is a successful counter push for uh, for the Radiant team, for Aeon. Reality Rift, 3 seconds stun, and Nick Mai in some trouble. Here comes the Windrunner as well. And uh, she will be able to take the last hit for that one. Killing spree for that. Uh, yeah. So I do think that this, this counter push from, from Aeon was great. But they still lost a tier three tower fairly fast, if I might add. But uh, yeah, it's I'm I'm quite surprised to see that they were able to still pick up some heroes and and S U C because S U C has been playing very careful and last couple of fights they have been able to back off before anything else happened. But they were still picked off. Then the Shrek died and the Shadow Demon died. Their Enigma died, of course. And it, it's just uh, yeah. Good, good play by uh, by Aeon. Maybe a bit sloppy play by SGC of staying there for so long. But then again, tier three tower might have been worth it for them. Uh, gold is still in favor of SGC though. They with the towers, with those towers, they're taking a lot of gold. Experience graph will show that they are taking team fights as well. As uh, we've seen a gold per minute, Lashrak being on highest, he's been able to take most of the hits last hits for the towers. So that's going to be him being up there. Dark Seer being very high as well though. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> well. Uh, being able to build towards the Aghanim Scepter, so that will, ma will make a difference if the push didn't happen again. <coughs> wow, I'm sorry. Sorry, that's what's my voice being a bit annoying. Though that will make me want to take a sip of water again. Uh, everybody of Aeon and meet up on the stop lane, we're gonna follow the t chaos night while I take a sip of water again. There we go. So let's see where they're going. They smoked up. They are going to try to go in from the side. They will find a lot of heroes that have also been smoked up from SGC though. It's going to be depend on who's going to come from the high ground. Nobody. They're going to come in from even ground. Oh, Chaos Knight. They know that it's there. Phantasm being popped. There they go. Reality Rift. Beast Mouser is in trouble. Three seconds stop. Black Hole Carson only catches up on the Chaos Knight. But that's the most important one. Pipe going up. And not a black hole because it was stolen by the Rubik and he catches three in that one. He will still go down at the end of it though. Windrunner dropping there as well and it's going to be the Chaos Knight that will drop as well. Already three down for SGC and the only thing they lost was the Storm Spirit once. But he had an Aegis so he stayed alive and that's SGC taking a massive team fight. Even though a black hole was used against them, Storm Spirit managed to pick up this Rupter on his way out still. 2600 gold up on him so four heroes down it's only the Darkseer staying alive there. A nice, uh, definitely a nice job by uh, by SGC. I mean, there was just 
for for the for the radiant team, there was just not enough damage for the black hole to go through, not enough AoE damage. They have a lot of single target, but that that black hole requires some sort of AoE damage, like Axis, like Lashrak Stun, like Edict, like the ra like the Dire team have. But the radiant team just doesn't have it, and they just went in, destroyed the two barracks, and back off again. Very safe. Don't want to wait until it's a uh, late la last moment. They're just gonna back off and gonna go again towards the bottom or the top lane next. BKB up on the Shrek. So next time uh, there is a fight like that, he won't get silenced by the by the by the static storm from the disruptor because that would have probably been very annoying for him to deal with. Uh, Nick, we already saw his BKB 2K gold up on him, working on his blink there, most likely 2600 gold up on the Beastmaster. Let's see what the rest is having. Storm Spirit picking up an overclock. What was the recipe that he just got or he just sold? I think he just sold a recipe. Hmm. Is he gonna go for that BKB? I kinda expect him to do that. Just again, I mean that static storm is just really annoying. You can't cast on it. It's it's just a silence. And you can't get going away from it either if that kinetic field is there. Everybody of Aeon's middle lane wanna go for something. Barbecue smell is getting stronger. Sad. Blink dagger up on the dark sea. We'll be able to blink in, use his initiation, it's building still towards his acronyms. No surprise, because yeah, BKB being built for the Chaos Knight. Just checking if I missed any items. And and like I said at the start of the game, even though BKB is being guild, built is like his first big item that he will have. He died seven times by the way, it's pretty painful. And uh, even with that BKB, there will still be a black hole that will catch him. And he has been calling that black hole twice now. And there will also still be uh, the roar to go through that. So I'm not quite sure what he is aiming for there and what uh, what is going to go on with that. Well, we'll find out soon enough. In the meantime, another smoke up for SGC. The previous one worked out great, so they just want to do it again. And this time they're going to go towards the bottom lane. Uh, they do have the Lashrek just making sure that the lane down the top lane gets pushed as well. So they might have a chance to rotate it to, to the top lane if the gank on the bottom lane is successful. He has got his BKB completed. Uh, we did see that already, didn't we? Yeah, I guess we did. Let's check out the levels for a second. Darkseer are being up very high for the Dire team. Uh, sorry, for the Radiant team, but that's the only one. I mean, the rest is uh, is lower than most of the... I mean, you can see for yourself. Three level 17s up on the Radiant team. And only one level 8... Three level 17s up on the Dire team. And only one level seven and level 18 up on the uh, Radi Radiant team. And the rest is all lower. It's uh, it's 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 not looking all that good. We're gonna see that in experience graph too. He's been dropping very very rapidly. And that's the kill. The team fights that have been taken by uh, by SDC the last two. Chaos Knight, Rubik both died seven times already. Disruptor, oh, wow, Disruptor pick not working out at all for them right now. He has died eight times, not been able to get any kills just yet. And it looks like they're expecting. Well, they have to wait for some time. Roshan will be back up shortly, but. I think they mistimed it a bit. Even though we do see it ticking, uh, ticking on. This is this last uh, bridge that it has to cross. Chaos Knight. I mean, he got the rest before his BKB. He still needs a couple, though. A couple of gold, 800 gold, 750 gold to be exact. Exact. 2900 gold up on the Beastmaster. What was he's going to go for? If he's going to go for BKB as well. Just like the Storm Spirit, who has it complete now. Shrek continuing to farm. And there's Roshan, they find Roshan. Warlock find Roshan. Gets harassed by it, gets stunned by it twice. Uh, but yeah, smoke up. There they go. They know Roshan is up again, they can count. Aeon does not want to let that happen. Pipe is up. They just want to charge in there. Pipe failed to hit on the Chaos Knight though. They just want to continue charging in there, but there's nobody there! Phantasm already popped, they have to take the team fight now, otherwise the Phantasm is wasted, but as you see on the way out, they're looking for the kill, looking for the initiation, there's the pipe up as well, Black Hole being cast, it catches two from the Enigma, nice one, with the Rubik in there as well, who goes down, all BKBs are popped, that is gonna be Disruptor going down too, that's already three down, Prof Hatchet on the way out, is the, well, Awesome is looking for the kill with the blink from Prof Hatchet, will make sure he's not getting it, four down, with only the Windrunner left alive, and he, actually, yeah, Windrunner was able to t to to TP out of there, I guess. Yeah, TP on Skula, so she is the last one alive, and she will be the only one left uh, between the tier three towers and uh, and SDC SDC who has chose to go for a push rather than going for Roshan by the looks of it. 
they are walking towards the bottom lane because the lane is a perfect position for them to push in. This is their chance to take down another Rex, to maybe force out the GG. If they can take this, they probably will be in the winner's bracket. There we go, Kratos already there, clearing out to Creep Wave, doing some damage on the tower. Where's the rest? Here comes to the track with this Edict. Creep Wave is not there, but who cares about a Creep Wave? Look at that Edict just ripping through the tower. Fortification goes off, will hit for a while on Kratos, but he'll think, you know what, I don't care, I got a Blood Zone. Even if I die, I got 17 charges, so I won't be there for that long. Pipe goes off again. And there is the Radiant team back alive, but they don't have that much yet to go through with that. Another Besetsu Barracks about to go down here. They can't do anything against it. Power Shot will go through, but it's not enough. And as you see, thinking, you know what, we got what we came for. We're backing off again. We're going to go for Roshan. See you later, guys. I think they're coming off for Roshan anyway. We'll find out, though. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, Aeon that's going to be left with a mess here. So I'm left with a mess to deal with, uh... With the creeps in the base, and maybe with the tier 3 tower to defend on uh, the top lane also. Uh, yeah, as you see, going for Roshan. And even though, you know, they know it's happening most likely, and they have got some form of team fight, I don't think they can do anything against it. And the next team fight they lose is probably going to be the last one they lose, because they would have to call GG most likely. Not 100% sure, though, we'll find out soon. Because it looks like they are going for it. Roshan will be down before the fight starts, though. Roshan there he goes. <laughs> Vacuum, getting you all together, just ar just annoying more than anything. Pipe going up once again, they didn't want to go for this. No black hole though, but who cares about that one? Two seconds stand up on the Beastmaster, will delay it for a sec. Profites are blinking in, pops his BKB, doesn't have a black hole, but doesn't care. Phantasm being used there. Cranage and Warlock taking a lot of damage here actually, but no, Darks here taking a lot more. Being uh, on the run again, there goes the Darks here, killing off the Beastmaster, the first one. Vacuum up to the high ground, the Shrek can't do anything but just stand and cast there, gets the kill on the Rubik's Storm Spirit, actually taking the last hit, getting a double kill by killing off the Disruptor, and that is two for two so far as the chase is on for the Chaos Knight, or is it, we, who is chasing who here, two seconds set up on the Storm Spirit, Storm Spirit who thinks he can take this, Shackle doesn't latch, and they, they will back off here, but they notice that, oh wow, I was gonna say they noticed that Enigma is coming, but Enigma is only 50 HP, so I'm not sure what he was thinking. He doesn't have that much mana yet either. He does have a black hole if he manages to catch everybody. Uh, but still, Enigma picking up the last hit on the Chaos Knight. Nice kill steal, Prophet. Well, I can't really call it a kill steal. But uh, definitely Oak Rage finding the Windrunner. Windrunner being a very low mana, and it's actually gonna be Storm Spirit that's gonna TP towards the mill lane. He has boots to travel, and he is gonna go for this Darkseer. Darkseer, who is gonna go down Godlike Cranage right now. He is 15 for 5 and 17 assists. He has been in 32 kills out of the 38. That is massive. That is absolutely massive. Lushrak being close by, though, by that. He is on 27, so. It's really, it's really uh, some nice teamwork here by SGC, being able to be all over the place the whole time. And here we have everybody of SGC on the top lane. And they want to push. They can push. They have the power for it. And if they, if they hold the siege long enough, and if they force Aeon to be standing like around here is long enough, maybe take a team fight outside of their base, which is actually what Aeon should try to do to just stop their towers and barracks from going down, but if it takes too long then there will be two lanes with mega creeps, mega melee creeps and mega range creeps uh, pushing in and they will start taking down tier 4 towers just like they did with this one when the fight of Roshan took too long, this tier 4 tower dropped and the last tier 4 tower is just as perceptible for that as the first one and it's already down to below half HP so it should be really carefully dealt with with Aeon Massive pushing and coming, massive creep wave as well, with Ionlons helping out, there goes the tower being harassed first, there's no fortification up just yet, Hawk gets taken down, Yale's Knight wants to take the fight outside there, there's awesome already, two seconds on, landing on the Enigma, and he wants to blink in, whoa, he already gets picked up though, Kale's Knight doing immense damage there, but there's Storm Spirit, getting a double kill, killing of the Windrunner, killing of the Ruby, killing of the Disruptor, and only two heroes left alive for Aeon, they still have the Chaos Knight, and they still have the Darks here, but that is it. Three seconds, some will stop Cranage from chasing down. No, but only for a second. It was actually Shadow Demon that took the last hit there. No ultra kill for Cranage, but the tier 3 tower will still drop. Darks here standing in the base. Can't do anything right now. Can't do anything right now. We do have the bar melee barracks dropping. We have the range barracks dropping, and that is Mega Creeps, and that is a GG. So that will mean that SGC will make it through the winner's bracket and will face either... Uh, well, we'll face the winner of next game Z versus Rush. We will start at six. Let's actually now. We'll start at six tonight.
So we'll see. Uh, we'll see that game then to see uh, which team SEC is gonna face. Uh, the loser of that game is gonna be facing uh, Aeon in the losers bracket on Monday. So. Um, tomorrow is all the winners bracket games. So far, the winners brackets are believers as well as MTW. So SGC now adding that to the pool. Let's see which team is gonna be uh, the last one to uh, get that uh, quartet complete. Uh, my name is Shiva. I'm a Ghost of Gamers caster. Go check out Ghost of Gamers on that slash Dota 2 for all your Dota 2 information. And this was a match for Pro Dota 2 non Pro for the playoffs. And if you want to find out more about that, about how the teams got there, uh, how the teams got here rather. Um, what they did to beat uh, to beat other teams and stuff like that. Everything you want to know about the Pro Dota 2 non-Pro League, also about the Pro League, which will start on Wednesday uh, with the with the Pro teams in it. Even though that doesn't mean to say that there's no Pro teams in this one. It's just called the non-Pro League. Uh, anyway, if you want to know more about that, go check out uh, ProDota2.com. And then the two just written down like a number, not not a uh, not letters. So that's. Uh, ProDota2.com, go check those out, and please subscribe to my YouTube, uh, youtube.com uh, slash shevergaming, that would be very much appreciated. And I do think you have looked at the screen long enough, I will be jumping back to a different overlay, and uh, where I will wait until uh, the game will start between uh, NextKZ and Arosh. That's what we're going to do, because that's going to be another ProDota2 non-pro game. So stay, stick around if you want to watch that. Uh, in the meantime, I will also tell you if you want to watch something in the meantime where you can find what. So if you want to watch that, then uh, if you want to know that, then stick around as well. So uh, yeah, be right back and uh, stay tuned for sure.